Nine conductor speed wire, the wire that every installer should have on hand at all times. But why? What are the uses for this stuff? Can this be used to relocate a radio or for grabbing signal for a digital signal processor? Or can we maybe even use the small wires inside to power high power speakers? That is coming up. Hey, what's going on guys? Mark here with Car Audio Fabrication. Now, right now on Project Jeep Build, I'm starting to get into the phase where I wanna actually tap in and grab the signal from the stock head unit in order to use with my digital signal processor. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to have to use Speedwire. If you run a car audio shop, you likely know how useful it can be to have multi-conductor wire. And if you're a car audio hobbyist, I definitely recommend that you take a look at getting some of this. In this video, I wanna talk about what is Speedwire, what can we use it for, how do we use it, and what are some applications that we wouldn't necessarily wanna use this for. So let's start with taking a look what what is Speedwire? So Speedwire is basically nine different smaller wires all packed in to one. Upon stripping Speedwire, you'll notice that the wires have the standard wiring colors that match most vehicles. So you're gonna see gray wires, violet wires, white wires, and green wires. Now the advantage of Speedwire is whenever you need to actually run multiple different conductors, it's very easy. This stuff is very flexible and it's easy to run throughout a vehicle, much more so than having to actually have eight separate wires. There's also typically a ninth wire that is just blue and can be used for a signal turn on. So that's simple enough, but what is speed wire actually used for? Really anything that you need multiple different wires packed into one. First off, speed wire can be used to easily relocate a radio. So if you're doing a classic car, for instance, where you maybe wanted to hide the head unit within the trunk of a vehicle or within the glove box, you could do so by using speed wire. Now, another option is say that you are installing a four channel amplifier in the trunk of the vehicle. And because of the budget of this particular build, you don't wanna rerun speaker wires to all the individual speakers within the vehicle. You could actually run speed wire back to the main harness, the main radio harness, and then send the speaker signal from the four channel amplifier to all four speakers using that path. Now, one of my favorite uses of speed wire though is actually to grab the signal from the factory head unit and then to transfer that signal to a digital signal signal processor. This is what you guys will be seeing soon on Project Jeep Build. Finally, you could use Speedwire for wiring up some LEDs or maybe if you were doing some sort of really complicated relay install where you had a bunch of different relays controlling different aspects of the vehicle. This nine conductor wire makes it easy to do that. So let's take a close up look at how we can actually strip some of the speed wire. This is always my favorite part of unwrapping anything. Listen to that. Ooh, that's nice. Cut off a length here. So here's our trick. I have a nice little section of it here that I cut off. What you wanna do is just use these, but don't go too tight. Just enough to barely score the wire. And we'll twist it around a little bit. So this should be enough. If we twist it with our hands now, we can actually break it the rest of the way. Now the reason you want to be careful is because you don't want to actually cut any of the insulation of the wires that's within here. Otherwise, obviously, you're going to have an issue since there's multiple different conductors with them touching each other. We remove this protective paper, and there you can see all nine of our different conductors. Now this here, we don't necessarily need this. Cut that away. So here you can see what's inside our nine conductor cable. So obviously, like I was talking about earlier, you're gonna have your standard speaker code colors. So you have your gray wires, your violet, your green, and your white. And of course, each of these wires is going to have a positive and negative. So for the green, you see that we have just a solid green. And then for the black, we have a green and black. The same is true for the rest, except you'll notice that there's only one blue. This is actually our ninth conductor, and we can use this for a remote turn-on lead for amplifiers, 
or anything else that you needed to do with this ninth conductor. So obviously once you've got the main insulation stripped off the wire, you can then use the rest of your wires like you normally would, just strip them like so, so some of the wire is exposed and do what you need to do. Now, as an added final touch, something that you could actually do on this, just to give it that real nice, complete look, is you could actually put a little piece of heat shrink on here and heat shrink it just so that those are terminated a little bit better. You can see though, what's awesome about this speed wire is just the fact that you have literally nine wires that are contained within this one easy, convenient package, and it's literally super flexible. I mean, you're rarely going to need to go that tight of a bend in the vehicle, maybe 90 degrees, but not 180 like that, and there's no problems there. So what are some disadvantages, though, that might make Speedwire not the best decision to use in an install? Well, the first thing is maybe you're doing an install where really you only need two conductors or maybe four. And in that case, it might be better just to twist some of your own primary wire. So maybe in that application where you don't necessarily need all nine conductors, that might be a better choice. But with that said, I think that sometimes even if you're not going to use all the conductors, it might be better just to run this anyway because then if you do need to add more channels in the future to the install, you have those wires already ran and easy to use. Now the second thing about Speedwire that might not make it the best choice for every install is the actual size of each of these conductors. As far as I can tell, these wires are only about 18 gauge. So I did some quick math on this so that we had an example. If you were using about 20 feet of this and you had a 4 ohm 100 watt speaker, you would have a voltage drop of about 1.27 volts or a decibel loss of about 0.53 decibels. Now do keep in mind, one decibel is not even audible to our ears. So if you had an install with this wire and one without, you wouldn't necessarily be able to notice the difference. And just for reference, actually a 12 gauge wire would have about 0.14 decibels of loss in a comparable setup. So that's just for reference. But with that said, you're not gonna use something like this to run subwoofers where you're running 500 plus watts. There's a lot of things that I like about Speedwire, but I don't know that I'd be using it as actual speaker wire connected between an amplifier and a speaker. Whereas it's perfectly fine to use to grab signal for a digital signal processor, equalizer, amplifier, etc. In fact, I mentioned this earlier, I do actually plan to use this within the Jeep build for grabbing the signal. So if you're new here and you wanna see that video where I install this into the Jeep, be sure to subscribe so that you're notified when I upload future videos. If you're already a subscriber, you can follow me on Instagram at CarAudioFab. I like to upload different updates between the videos there, as well as some other tips and tricks. As always, a special thanks goes out to Eddie, Brian, Ali, Eric, Finchie, EJ, Emmanuel, Rory, Truman, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon support team. A big thanks to those guys for helping support this content. You may have noticed I actually have a lapel microphone going on now. I actually have a nice wireless system so I can work wherever I need to in the shop. So a big thank you to you guys for making that possible, which helps me to enhance the quality of these videos. If you would like to learn what that's all about and help support the content, you can check that out below as well. Don't forget to design, build, and install. Thank you guys again for watching.